All right, folks, welcome back. Oh, I still got my mask on, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't need that, I'm in a room by myself uh, in the, uh, the abyss here, in the white void of nothingness. Um, anyway, uh, today we're gonna go through uh, day two of the statics lab for lesson 41. And today we're gonna go over it together. So you've already submitted pictures of your best try. And now what I'm gonna do is help you uh, get this all done. Uh, we're gonna go through it together and you're gonna update everything that you got wrong and fix your mistakes and things that you left blank. And you're gonna take new pictures of them and submit them for part two or day two, if you will. So let's get right down to it. Some of the stuff you already have. So let's just take a look at the document. I'll try and not take too long. You've had a rough couple days of doing a lot of work. So uh, this one, let's hope it's a little bit easier. Um, so let's just talk about it again, right? Taking a pith ball with a positive rod, draw the diagram. So obviously the rod was positive. This was neutral. Neutral will attract to a charge, so there's automatically an attraction. And I kind of zoomed in and showed you why. Because in this pith ball, the electrons are balanced, right? At the start, there's positives and negatives everywhere. But as you bring that rod close, the negatives move to one side because they want to go to the positive. And the positives are like, ugh, get away. This creates an imbalance, and that's going to attract the pith ball. Now, the second they touch, boom, all those negatives jump. Because remember, negatives are allowed to leave. Negatives can jump, and they do. They go right off of the pith ball, right into the rod, and the rod's so positive, it doesn't even change the rod at all. But now all the negatives are gone out of the pith ball, and you get right here an incredibly positive pith ball with an incredibly positive rod. And what is the rule? Like charges repel. Now we did that one together, but let's just prove it. I've got a neutral pith ball here, kaboom. I always touch myself with the pith ball to my skin here so that it uh, is grounded. So I'm gonna make glass rod, plastic bag. Bag makes a positive rod. All right, they're gonna attract and repel. So take a look. Uh, here, I'll put it on my shirt. That's, that's good. All right, so they're going to attract. Instantly, those electrons are going to jump off the pith ball, and then they're both going to be positive and repel. Attract, and now they're scared of each other. They don't want to touch because this is positive, and this is positive, and we've proven it. Okay, I'm going to neutralize that. Let's move on to number two. What charge does the pith ball have? The correct answer was, the pith ball is now positive. You can tell because it repels from the positive rod equals like charges always repel. And this is the reverse, right? Part two is bring a negative rod near a pet ball when they touch and after what happens. And let's just look at this. So this is going to be pretty easy, right? Negative rod. I'll make a negative rod. I'm super allergic to that first, so uh, got this rod. It's got nothing, right? I've grounded it. Let's see, now it's gonna attract and instantly repel. Attract, because neutral will attract to a charge, and this is negative. Attract, touch, afraid. Does not want, it's repelling now, right? That's kind of fun, actually. It's like magic. I hit it by accident. Um, so let's look at the science behind it, right? In the beginning, this, when you bring it close, all of the positives in the pith ball move to one side, and all the negatives are like, ugh. As you bring it closer, this side is super positive. So this side is super positive. This side is super negative. And the rod is negative. But these electrons jump in. I would say electrons, electrons jump to ball. Now that means that you've got, yeah, you still have a couple positives here, but mostly you've got a whole bunch of negatives in your pith ball. And the rod is still super negative, And they are super repelling. And now this brings me to the hardest, most philosophical question of the day. 
How can you definitively test an unknown object? And now, if you need to pause to get this done, just pause the page now. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, you just pause it and uh, come back and catch up. So I hope you got everything written down. Remember, this is your job is to correct everything and write it down. So how can you test an unknown object? OK, let's, let's think about this. If I don't know what this is, and I bring really scientific, a negative rod, and it attracts, I could say, this was positive, because positive and negative attract. Well, no, 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 not so fast, because neutral will also attract to negative, right? So we don't know if it was neutral or, posi or, or, or positive. It attracted. The only true way to tell is if I bring, say I take this object and I tell you, OK, I'm going to promise you, don't look for a second. I'm just kidding, but I'll turn my back and I'm going to charge the pith ball. All right, I've got a pith ball and it is charged. I made a charge. If I bring a negative near it and it repels, I know that it's negative. So the only true way to know an unknown object's charge is to test for repulsion. Repulsion is accurate, right? I'll explain. Um, neutral, sorry, here we go. Neutral will attract opposites will attract, but like charges repel. Therefore, The only true test for charge is repulsion. The only way you can be sure is if there's repulsion. All right, now I'm going to give you a warning here. You can pause this and write that down and catch it up and correct and erase your mistakes and fix it up. I'm going to leave that there for a second and pause it if you need, and I'm moving on. Okay. Now, we're going to do a couple experiments here, and it's a warm summer's day, and uh, there's some moisture in the air. So some of these experiments that I'm going to do, it's probably going to be funny because they're going to fail. I, I'll explain uh, the theoretical stuff on the paper, and I'll draw the correct answer. But when I show you them, uh, you can, it's OK to have a little laugh at my expense, because if I did this in the driest day of winter, I'd probably get good results. But Static labs are funny. If you watch the Julius Sumner video, <laughs> you saw him fail. And the guy's a physicist, right? So uh, good old Sitnik here, he might have some trouble. But we'll see how these work out. And I'll explain the theory of what they were going for first. So I'll draw the theory of what should happen. And then we'll try the experiment. And we'll see how it goes. So let's talk about how these electrons and protons are going to move in the next couple questions. All right. Let's look at the, the question first. So. Bring a positively charged rod close to one end of a copper pipe on a glass beaker. And that just means why they put it on the glass beeper, beaker is because if I put a rod on a glass beeper, beaker, <laughs> if I touch it, I'm never going to ground it because glass sucks at giving, uh, conducting electricity. Glass is an insulator. So it's almost as if this metal rod is floating freely in space untouched by my hand. So it's a, it's a neutral metal rod, and it says, Bring a positive rod near it, and then touch the other side. What should happen in theory? Oh, that was loud. Um, let's see. So what the first thing you've got to draw is you've got to draw all of the negatives moving to this side. Negatives really want to get into this. Anything negative wants to jump. It really wants to jump, right? And anything positive becomes very terrified. So that's the first thing you can, you can draw, right? That's what we've done. We've induced a charge. We've created negatives on one side and positives on the other side. The problem is, as soon as I do this, negatives in my, th my hand, my hand has positives and negatives, right? But all the negatives in my hand are going to want to jump from me. So I would say negatives 
jump from finger because they're so attracted to this rod through the metal because the metal is a conductor, right? You can even say conductor. It really, it'll let those neck electrons go and then my electrons from my finger will also jump on this side and now we're gonna have a ton of negatives over here and only a few positives over there. And then when you remove everything and you take everything away, ho, you just made a negative rod. The rod has become negative. What the heck? You used a positive rod to make something negative. That's what I like to always say induction 2.0 is. So let's try this out. Oh, this is going to be messy. I can already feel this one failing miserably. I'll remove the electroscope for today. Um, I will leave my book here, but I'll put this here. So let's say, um, generally things with one copper pipe aren't bad in the summer, but things with uh, two copper pipes are pretty craptastic. I don't even know if that's a word. I just invented it. All right, so you see this? We've got a rod. I'm going to touch it. I'm going to ground it. It's got nothing. My body's got lots of electrons and po uh, uh, positives, so it can do whatever it needs to. I am the ground in this situation. And I'm going to bring a positive rod nearby. And this is the theory, right? We'll see if it works after. I'll test it for repulsion after. So I'm going to make a positive rod. I'm going to bring it close. Now, if I hear a spark, I've got to restart. Anytime you hear a spark in a lab, it's already conducted. So if you bring it too close, you'd hear a spark. I've got to restart it. So I'm going to bring it close without a spark. And then I'm just going to briefly touch the end and remove it. Close, touch the end, remove it. Okay. So in theory, I have just created a very negative rod. What happened is I brought the positive close. All the negatives jump to this side, and anything that was coming negative from here wanted to go that way, right? So my finger has positives and negatives, and as soon as I touch it, the negatives in my finger are like, ooh, there's a positive through the metal. I want to go. I want to go. And it runs, and all the negatives jumped into the pipe, and then I removed it, and I just left this super negative pipe. So if I make a negative pith ball and bring it close, it probably it probably won't want to touch. So I'm going to make a negative pith ball and see if it's afraid of this copper pipe. Is Mr. Sitnik crazy doing statics in summer? All right, so I've made a nice negative pith ball. Does it want to touch? Oh, I don't know. Let's see. I'm worried. Oh, it actually doesn't. That's cool. It's like it won't touch. So, huh. I can't believe that worked. Cool. Like I said, things that use one copper pipe are generally better than the experiments that use two. So. My failures might be imminent, but you just understood what I did. Positives attracted the negatives, and it even attracted the negatives out of my finger when I touched. But I never touched the positive. I just brought it close. I induced it and sucked out some negatives from my finger, removed everything. Now we got a negative rod, and I tested it with repulsion by bringing a negative pith ball. <laughs> so cool. All right. Now, let's look at this. Um, Place a metal pipe on a glass be beaker. Suspend the pith ball so that it touches one end of the pipe. Touch the other end with a charged rod and see what happens. And then do it with wood as well. Well, <laughs> okay, let's see what happens. This one isn't that hard. Um, I'm going to draw the electrons first. So what would happen is when it's close, all the positives will move here, obviously. And the negatives will move there. And when I move negatives over, they will jump. And this rod will become super negative. This pith ball, the electricity would have touched it and made the pith ball super negative, And now they repel. So what happened is I gave negatives to the rod. Those negatives flew through, made the pith ball negative, And the pith ball went, ah, and jumped away in theory. Remember, only negatives can jump. So I made a negative rod by conduction. So I would say this one is induction. And this one is conduction, because I touched it, right? So let's see how this one works. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to make a negative rod, super negative rod. OK. I'm going to take a pith ball that's neutral. I'm going to bring it to one end. I'm just going to touch it. 
And when I touch this, it should repel. <gasps> it did. This pith ball is scared of the rod because the negatives went into the rod, through it, into the pith ball. The pith ball became negative. The rod is negative. This is negative because I touched it. And now negatives and negatives don't want to touch each other anymore. Let's do that one more time. I can't believe that works so well. I'm two for two. All right. Let's try this again. I've never had this kind of static luck. All right. Neutral pith ball. I'm going to touch it. Oh, the rod is still charged. There we go. Touching. And you'll see it jump away. <laughs> That's so cool. Come on. Come on. The electricity flew through the conductor into the ball. They both became negative through conduction because I touched the rods of the pipe and they repel. And I would say conduction. And if you do it with wood, I hope you know this. If you do the same experiment with a piece of wood, let's see. Man, this is cool. I get so excited about this stuff. This is what happens when you have a drama teacher teaching science. They get too excited about everything. They're too dramatic. So I'm just going to bring it here. And when I touch it to a piece of wood, nothing. Why? Why is it so? Because wood is an insulator. Wood is not a conductor. Electricity doesn't flow through wood. If electricity flowed through wood, we could be in a little bit of trouble in the world. So um, I would say nothing happens. And then it says, what happens and why? Wood is an insulator. Wood does not let electricity flow through it. Sorry, I'll give you the uh, document there. So I would say nothing happens and because wood is an insulator. That's what you need to write there. Wood is an insulator, so nothing happens. So clean that up. If you need to pause to write down all the theory, that's OK. And we're going to move on to the last one, which I guarantee has to fail, because I've already got two of the hard ones correct. So that means the third one is like cursed. All right, so pause it if you need. And we're going to do the last thing. And then we'll talk about the back sheet for a second, but that'll take one second. And then you're done for the day. Isn't this nice to have a little bit of a more chill lesson for once? Um, so write that down if you need. and. Uh, I'm going to move on to the last one. And the last one, I believe you, um, you induce a charge, and then you separate them and see what happens. So I'm going to show you the theory of what's supposed to happen, and then we'll actually look and see what did happen, all right? I want to talk like Julius Subner, but I can't yet. Um, so here we go. Um, let's see the theory on the document, Cam. All right, let's see what happens. So I bring this near. Where do the protons and electrons go? The protons all move to this rod, and the electrons all move to this rod because they're like, ugh, electrons, negatives, I want to get it far away. Oh, protons, I want to come here. Ooh, I want to attract the electrons. But I never touch it. There's never a touch. So what happens is when you separate them, this rod becomes positive, and this rod should become very negative. That is the trick to that question. So write that down if you want. And let's see if I can actually make that happen. I have very little faith in this, but uh, we'll try. So um, let's see. I've got two glass beakers of about the same size, two grounded pipes. I'm going to make sure they're touching good. Uh, it says to bring a negative rod. So I'll make a negative rod close. See, I'm taking fur on rubber. Make it a nice charged rod. I'm going to bring it close, which is going to push all the electrons to this side and push all the protons to this side. So this side should become positive when I separate them, and the other side should become negative. So this rod should be positive, that rod should be negative. Let's see if that worked. How can I test it? Charge a pith ball and see if it, uh, it repels. So if I say this side is positive right here, this side is positive. If I bring a positive fifth ball, it should not want to touch it. So let's do that. Let's make a positive fifth ball. OK, I'll just take some of the electrons from the fifth ball and make it super positive. It's, a, it's repelling. Let's see what happens. Does it want to touch this rod? Oh, it kind of did, but now it's kind of afraid. 
Yeah, it's slightly repelling. It's not the best result. But it doesn't want to touch. It should be touching, but it won't. Um, let's see if a negative, uh, let's see if we can make a negative one and see if we can do something similar where the negative will, uh, it will repel from the rod. Let's see. So I'll make a negative pith ball. And generally, negatives work better. This is really science you can. Mm -hmm. So I've made a negative pith ball. Let's see if it repels from this rod. Oh, this one's a little better. Oh, it kind of, it, eh, not the greatest result. And like I said, things with two copper pipes don't work as good, especially in the summer. Um, and if you could do all of these and replicate them in a classroom and make them work, and that's the only one that doesn't, you're doing pretty good. Especially if you can do number six with the uh, conduction and number five with the induction. This one, I think the trick to this one, honestly, is to have smaller copper pipes. It's just too big to push electrons all the way across. If I took this pipe and cut it in half and it was a little less of a distance for the electrons to travel, I think I could get it to work. Maybe I'll try that. Maybe I'll find some way of doing something similar and we'll, we'll test it out down the road. Uh, who knows? But let's go to the last sheet. Um, remember, oh sorry, that's not what you need. You need that. Um, so you can write that down, pause it if you need to, and then we're going to move to the last sheet and then we're done. Okay, I'm going to move. All right, so this is easy peasy. Uh, positive and neutral, well, neutral will still attract. C and D, negative, and positive, well, opposite particles will obviously attract. A and D, a negative and a positive, they will attract. E and F are a neutral and a neutral. A neutral and a neutral, what will they do? What will a neutral and neutral do? Hey, neutral, hey. They do nothing. They just sit there and do nothing because they're normal uncharged particles, normal uncharged objects in the world just hanging out doing nothing. If they tr attracted, we'd be in trouble. The universe would be completely different than we know it. So, and B and D, a positive and a positive. What are a positive and a positive going to do? Ugh, they're going to want to repel. So, that's your lesson. What you got to do is take all the notes that I did and correct your mistakes, fix everything up, draw it down on your paper, take new pictures of all the sheets that you've done, right? Take new, refresh pictures with all the proper answers for, for this, 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 and that. Clean everything up, submit it to me on the classroom, and you're done for the day. We're going to move on to some reading and some worksheets, and then the test review. It's going to be about another week, but it's going to be reading and questions. Um, so it's a little bit different than labs right now, but a lot of the reading and questions should be pretty easy because if you can get through these labs and understand what the science is, then the, the worksheets are actually pretty easy. But it's another way to look at it because some kids like reading and worksheets, some kids like seeing experiments, some kids like both. So we kind of try and do a little bit of everything. If you need it on a nice paper written and described in paragraphs, that's coming up. And if you want to, you can read through and do the questions. So that's the next kind of level of assignments. Um, we're about halfway through the unit. So uh, good job, it's a short one. And uh, submit everything, submit your revised marks for lesson 41 and uh, part two, and we'll see you soon.